Hey everyone, welcome back to another quick single topic Avid tutorial. And what I want to look at today is audio and audio tracks in group clips. This is something that I will admit I am not a total expert in, but something that I think is pretty confusing. And I looked around quite a bit online when I was trying to figure this out and there's not really clear explanations or good tutorials on this. So I hope this can at least give some clarity and a jumping in point for anyone who's trying to work with these. So the scenario here is I have something that was shot multicam, so I'm going to create a group where I can switch between different cameras and have all the stuff synced. And the thing I want to focus on is what audio tracks are showing up and how to choose what tracks are going to be ending up in your sequence. For me, this is a big deal. I work in audio post as well. And I want to make sure if I'm editing something that the tracks that end up in my sequence are the ones I want to eventually send on to audio posts and I'm not creating additional work or having to refine the tracks I want at that late stage. So I'd like to just set this up correctly in the first place. So I have a few uh, cameras here. This is a three camera interview where the audio was recorded separately. So you can see we have three cameras and separate audio. And this is going to turn out to be relevant. This is a six track audio recording. And in this case, the first two tracks are like a mix down and then tracks three, four, five, and six are the original raw ISOs. And I believe in this case, turns out track five is empty. There's not anything on it, but tracks three, four, and six have three different microphones and then tracks one and two were a mix down. I already set endpoints on all these, so I'm just going to group them quick using their endpoints. Okay, so now I've got a group clip. Let's just edit this quickly because my audio was way longer than the camera shot here. There's actually parts two of these, but I'm not going to get into that. I have a separate tutorial on working with cameras that were split into multiple clips and syncing those all up. You can look at that if you want. But in this case, I'm just going to go over here and trim this way down. Okay, so it's approximating the length of the rest of the clips there. And then I'm going to close this and it's going to ask me if I want to update it. And if I try to update it, it's going to give me an error because you can't shorten a group clip. This is just a, I don't know if it's a feature or a bug, but it's something within Avid. So I'm going to say, okay, let's just make this a new clip. Fine. Okay, so this is our shorter interview synced. So now I've got that. And let's just say I went and tried to put this into a sequence sequence load this up in here and you can see it shows up that there are six audio tracks in my source clip so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a couple new audio tracks command U and just edit that whole thing into here you know maybe I'll just trim it down a little bit to get something where we have some picture there okay so you see this is showing up as six tracks here and because this is a group clip that has these multiple clips inside it again if I go back in here and go to edit group and look at it. You can see it has these three different camera shots and it has an audio track for each of those three camera shots. And then it also has my audio that was recorded separately. That's not part of a camera. This was just off an audio recorder. And you'll notice in this, uh, when I go into edit group here, it shows each of these as one track. And I'll just point out something that I think is a little confusing here is it doesn't matter in terms of what audio ends up in your sequence which tracks these are on. So if I like reorganize these and put them on different track numbers, that's not going to have an impact. It also actually doesn't matter. You know, let's say I said, actually, I want two tracks of this and I, you know, copy this and bring it down here and then go back up and paste it back in there. So now I have two tracks of this same clip. That's not actually going to do anything. In fact, if I say I want to update this and then let's look at it again, I'll go back and edit group. So you just erase that other one I had. It doesn't matter. So one of the things I think is confusing about this is when you're looking inside your group, the track numbers these are on and what track of each you see doesn't really make any difference. You can uh, click on these and do change source tracks. Like if I want to see for this camera, see track A2 instead, which would matter if I had my waveforms turned on. So like here, you can see if I switch from the default track one here and say, you know, show me track five, which I said was empty. Now I can see that that's empty. So uh, I can change these in here, but it's not again going to actually affect anything in my actual sequence. So I think that's thing number one to know is the way that you lay out your audio tracks in here. It doesn't directly impact what's showing up in your sequence. So that's thing number one. Okay, so let's clear that. Sure, let's update it, whatever. Then go back into my sequence here. It is showing up. I have six audio tracks here. If you look at the labels on these, you can see the first two here say they're from this camera angle. They're tracks one and two that came with that. And then I have some tracks here 
that are from the audio clip. This one says interview September 2021, audio, blah, 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 one, two, three, four. If I click on one of these, and specifically if I right click on it, I can actually choose which audio I want to be here. So I could say, you know, instead of this camera angle audio, I want the audio from this camera angle, or I want the audio from just the audio file from the recorder. And I can set those. What I can't do is change which track of these I'm using. So let's say I went into back to this camera angle and said, you know, there were two tracks of audio on this camera angle and I want to use track one or use track two. I can't choose that. It's either using audio from that camera angle or it's using audio from something different. It doesn't give me a choice of which track I wanted to use. And the reason for that is the way that Avid is handling these group clips is whatever track I was originally on here. So wherever it came from A1, a2, A3, A4, A5, A6, those are the options that I have. Now, if I go click down here, you'll see I don't have any choices. It's only giving me the choice of choosing something from this audio clip, not from any of the camera angles. And the reason is, well, now I'm on track A3 and my camera angles only had two audio tracks. If we go back to my original sources, you'll see camera angles all had A1, A2, A1, A2, A1, A2. So on all the A1, A2s here, I can choose between any of those things because all these had an A1 or an A2. The only thing that had tracks higher than that was my track from my recorder, which has tracks one through six. That is why there are six tracks that show up in the group. That's why it says that my group has six tracks is because that's the most tracks that anything within that group had. If everything in there just had tracks A1 and A2, my group would only show up with A1 and A2. Let's do that. Here's my three camera angles. I'll just group those. Say grouped cameras only. And you'll notice this just shows A1 and A2 for that group clip. It doesn't have six tracks like this original group clip I did. And that's because there's nothing in there that has anything higher than A1 or A2. So what I have a choice of here is I can choose between these things, but from each of them, I'm just choosing whatever was on track A1 of that original clip. Those are my only choices here. If I go down to here, A3, the only thing I had that had an A3 was this. So this is the only file I could choose here. In this particular case, just coincidentally, this works out pretty well for me because by default, when I edit this group into something, as long as I have six tracks to edit into, I'm gonna get tracks A1 and A2 from whatever my camera angle was. And again, I could change those if maybe there actually was better audio on a different camera angle. I could change it. And then tracks A3, A4, and A5, and A6 are coming from my audio recorder, which is great because as I mentioned, on my audio recorder, tracks A1 and A2 were just a mix down. And I happen to know in this case, no one was paying attention to the mix down. So I'm sure it's not a good mix. It's just those three channels sort of arbitrarily mixed together. But I had these three tracks that are actually original mics, track three, track four, and track six. And then, like I said, track five was empty. In fact, if we turn on audio waveforms, you can see that. So I have something on A1 and A2. So my camera was picking up some audio. It looks like the levels were really low, but the audio was turned on, probably just internal camera mic. And then Here's one of the mics from going to the audio recorder. Here's another one, here's another one, and then again, track A5 was empty. But as this turns out in this case, I actually got all my audio tracks that I want. I don't need that track A1 and A2 mixed down. If I wanted to see it, I could. So switch here to my audio only file, and I'll do the same thing here. So now I'm seeing tracks one through six of the audio file. But again, these first two I know are just a mix that was not done right. It's just whatever default mix the audio recorder was set to. No one was monitoring this. So I'm okay ignoring those and just taking the audio from the camera. And, you know, I may end up deleting this, but I may go ahead and send it to my audio post team because maybe there's something useful in here. You know, if the camera was in a good position, maybe it got something different than the mics. I don't know. But I have everything here I'd want to send to them. So key lesson number two. In your group clip, once it's been made as this, the only things you have to choose from each track are you can choose between the various files that had something in that track, but you can't choose a different track. So I can't choose something for this A1 here that was originally on A2 or on A3 or A4 or whatever. So here's the question. Let's say that maybe I wanted all six tracks of my original audio. I want A1 through A6 and I wanted my camera audio. Maybe that was a separate mic that was also good. And so I wanna have my camera tracks A1 and A2 and these original six tracks. How do I do that? Well, I'm gonna to have to do some kind of workaround here because the way this is set up by default, there's no way to get two different tracks that are on A1. So I can't get this A1 and this A1 at the same time. 
This is one of the things where I will say, if you look around online, there are lots of different workarounds people have found for doing things like this. I'm just gonna show you kind of the simplest one in a situation like this. And in this case, I'm not really worried about switching between different things so much as I just want this audio, you know, this was the thing that all my mics are feeding directly into. I want this available all the time. I don't want to worry about switching between angles, changing this or something like that. Even if I'm keeping my camera audio, I want all of these tracks available all the time, let's just say. So here's a workaround for how to do this. Remember this goes by whatever the original tracks were. So if I know my cameras are on A1 and A2, what I want to do is just get all these tracks onto a different track. So instead of A1 through A6, have them on, let's say, A3 through A8. And then if I make a group, those tracks will always show up available and I can still switch between my camera audio tracks here. So let's do this. I'm going to load this up into my source window and I'm going to create a new sequence. I'll call this new audio clip with different tracks. And I'm basically just kind of doing a little trick here to change the number of those tracks. So I've got that loaded up. I'll just load this sequence in here. I want to make sure I get all my tracks. So let's add a couple more audio tracks. There we go. Okay, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But I actually want to do something different. So remember, I want these on different tracks. So instead of just editing in like that, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to add a couple more tracks. So now I have tracks A1 through A8. And I'm going to turn off A1 and A2 and then just put these all going to tracks A3 through A8. So you see A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the original going to track A3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's edit that in. Okay, so now I have this sequence that has all this audio on tracks 3 through 8 instead of 1 through 6. And there's no edits or anything on here. So then all I'm going to do is use the old trick of auto-syncing this. So I'll just right click on it and say auto-sync to convert that sequence into a clip. But you'll notice now it's a clip that has audio on three through eight instead of on one through six. So now if I make this part of a group, my group will have eight tracks. And if all my other clips, being my camera angles in this case, are only on A1 and A2, then this clip will have everything on three through eight. And these will always be available. I won't have to switch angles and I'll keep all six of those tracks. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's see how you would do that quick. Let me pull this up here and find my sync point. And I actually forgot that when I created this, I already had an endpoint set on this. So it's just going to start right at that sync point. Yep. So that's fine. I'll just mark my endpoint at the very beginning of the clip then. And then I'm going to take that and take these camera angles again. And one more time, let's right click group clip, use endpoints. Okay. So group with all audio tracks available. And you'll notice now this has one through eight. And if I look at this, I'll go into edit group and you can see it still kind of looks the same. It has those three camera angles and shows there's audio and video for each. Again, it's just showing one track of each. And it shows this new audio clip that I made. And in this case, it's showing up on A1. Again, it doesn't matter what order these are showing up here. The important thing is that now when I make a sequence, let's make one more. Last temp sequence. So now I need to give myself some more audio tracks. One, two, three, four. So that I have places for all eight of those to go to. And let's load this up and we're just gonna edit it in there. And again, just to make this look a little more manageable, let's junk around here. And now you can see there were eight clips in here. Here's my two camera angles, but then now I have all six tracks from my audio mixer. And so on track A3 is what was originally track A1. So these two will be that default mix down. This will be one of my mics. This will be the second mic. This will be the third mic. And this will be that empty track. Let's go ahead and look at my waveforms just to see that. And you can see these top two look about the same because they're that mix down. Here's one of the mics, here's another mic, here's another mic, and here's that empty track. And then I have my two camera tracks up here. So now if I sent this to my audio post team, if I edit with this clip and send this over, I have all those original tracks to work with. That is a workaround for this. And you can apply that same sort of logic to any sort of scenario. You know, let's say maybe I was running two different audio recorders that were each recording several mics because I wanted all these microphones. 
I could do something like put each of those into a sequence, put them on different track numbers, and I could end up with something where maybe my group clip has 15 different tracks on it because I want all those original audio tracks showing up on all these without having to switch. You can see here, I don't have any options for these. It's always gonna be that. And up here on my camera angles, you'll see this is actually different than what we had before because now I just have the camera angles. I can't choose the audio only clip because it didn't have an A1 or A2. Everything it had was on A3 through A8. So. I still think that's a little confusing. Like I said, this is not something that I'm a huge expert in, but it's something that I was dealing with and found kind of confusing and wanted to try to clarify for other people. Hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, you may notice a theme that several of my last tutorials have been related to multi-clips and stuff. I'm currently working on a documentary where I'm dealing with some multi-cam stuff, which isn't something that I usually work with a ton. So that's been top of mind and trying to do some things that might be helpful to other people working with that. So hope this was useful. See you next time.